Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of the A to Z of British newspaper strips. And this is by Paul Hudson. Paul Hudson used to run the Comic Showcase, a superb London comic book shop. Used to visit a lot, bought loads of magazines, comics, etc. there, as well as books. And also he had a great stall at the London Comic Mart. Used to have pick up loads of great items there. Had very nice selection, artist editions, many other things that were quite unique. I really miss his stall, one of the best. Certainly, it was it's never the same since he's actually stopped doing his stall. However, let's just go into the book itself. Now, it's 316 pages, and it's a book palace book. It's only just come out, might be a month or so, a couple of days, I don't know. He was doing a signing at Gosh, and unfortunately, I didn't get to it because of the strike, so I didn't get up there. To, so I bought a copy separate from that. And what does this feature? Loads and loads of things. Detectives, criminals, layabouts, adventures. Literally millions and millions of comic strips that appeared all over the place in the UK. In obviously the main newspapers, the Sun, the Daily Mail, but also regional papers. So he covers a lot of material in this. Now, he says it's not complete, and I can certainly well believe that. It's probably impossible, since there's so many different newspaper strips probably in some of the small magazines, newspapers and things that probably have very limited sort of shelf life, didn't appear much. I've got loads of old magazines that have got like newspaper strips and I suspect not every single one of them are probably included here. There were like one or two, you know, items and that was it. Maybe appeared only once. So let's just go through the book and I hope, just going through this, that he does actually come out with a second or third, fourth editions because I think this is one of the things that you could do. Maybe people might obviously communicate ones that they know, maybe in Reading or something, or in Hull. There may be newspapers up there, and maybe it might be added to. So hopefully that's the case. So there's the details there. And it's slightly unusual the way it's been done. It's done obviously by contents. You've got A, B, C, D, which is fine. In many ways, there's other ways I think he could have done it, maybe breaking it down like by detective ones, or maybe romance ones, he could have broken it down that way. Obviously he made a decision that he wanted to do it by alphabetic order. That's probably one of the main criticisms I've got of the book. The book is superb, absolutely superb. And uh, it's in memory of Dennis Gifford, of course, had loads of books. Dennis Gifford created stacks and stacks of books about British newspaper strips, as well as comic books, etc. And uh, they're really, they're not too difficult to get. You should be able to find one. There's a lovely reference on the back listing a number of various related reference books. This is slight criticism. I think a lot of space is wasted by just doing this. Personally, I don't think it was a good idea putting that. But obviously he decided, Paul Hudson decided that's what he wanted. And also likewise that. Because basically it's duplicating the information that's in the section. You know it's A. I can work it out. It says A. <laughs> it's not difficult. So uh, you go through that and you can obviously look through and if your favourite one's not there, AXA or whatever, you can obviously then you won't find it. It's probably not going to be anywhere else. It's under A. So um, I'm not really certain point of including this list. It just takes up two pages and it's repeated all the way through the book. So for B, it's got another one. C, another one as well. It doesn't seem like... But there's lots and lots of examples there. You've got here Ace O'Hara, many I've never heard of. And it does actually give some details. The Daily Dispatch. Daily Dispatch? Never heard of that newspaper. I'm certain it was a great newspaper. 1954 to 1964. And you've got an example, obviously, of Ace O'Hara. Let's give some details. Not everyone has a huge amount of information, but you get an example there. I think every, sing every single one mentioned does have an example, which is really good. I would say that some of them are really super sharp, and I'm not certain the reason why some are sharper than others. It doesn't make sense. Sometimes you think with the older ones, say like 1950s, 1940s, where the material is going to be a slightly more blurry, but there's also slightly blurry ones for ones that are 1990. You would think that the source material would be more readily available, and this one's slightly blurry, but most are very, very sharp. And we've got this one, Adventures of Bonnie and Clyde. Now, I've never heard of that one either. And that is very, very sharp. You probably can't see it on the screen, but it certainly is. Now, it includes the artist, 
It's got the writer, it says unknown. Good old uh, John M. Burns for the artist. And you've got tidbits. I love tidbits. I remember my nan used to bring up tidbits every, and I was always going through that. And I remember Bonnie and Clyde. Thank you. Now, I didn't keep any of them. I wish I had. And tidbits is quite expensive now to buy copies of 1960s, 1970s. Probably do turn up. But it's, uh, yeah. And he's also got some colour ones as well. This one, the Canary Man. <laughs> I must admit, no, absolutely nothing about that. 1990s. Apparently it was in the Daily Mirror. So, uh, but it's got uh, the adventures of Drain Pig. And of course, this is a trouble. Which ones do you include? Do you include all the American ones as well? Because of course, we have probably had American ones. There was probably, I don't know, I can't think of one particularly, but they're probably ones like Superman or something, or Spider-Man maybe came over here and there was newspaper strips, Wonder Woman, maybe, I don't know. But do you include those? Of course, you can't include everything. He's obviously gone for British, British newspaper once it's so... It's not just, it's not everything that's been ever printed in a British newspaper. That's what I'm trying to say. But you've got here the Affairs of Eve, slash Eve. I'm not certain why that was. But it gives a little bit of detail to each of them. And you've got an example there. Oh, you've got Affairs of Eve and then you've got Eve. Which does complicate things because, of course, do you put it under Eve or do you put it under the Affairs of Eve? Maybe it would have been best to have a section later on saying, look up. Obviously, the affairs of Eve. Maybe he does do that. I don't know. But you've got here, let's go to C now. And you've got Claire in the community. 1995 to 2020. Clearly, I assume that's still going. Or maybe it's 2020. Maybe that's obviously, I've no idea. I assume it's probably not continuing. You've got the Daily D's. Dan Dyer. <laughs> now, some obviously clearly are parodies. And there are some. Going through this, I'm thinking, you know what, that looks very, very much like an American one. There's one here, and he does mention it. Paul Hudson mentions it, which is great. And uh, he sort of says, about peanuts. Because this one, it just looks, to me, to personally to me, I, I was thinking, hmm, that looks a bit. And I'm certain if you get this book, which you should, if you're into newspaper strips, British material comic books, I think you will love this. And of course, my favourite, Fred Bassett. I love Fred Bassett. Seeing him when I was growing up. I'm not certain. I mean, they were very repetitive. But I like Fluke. He mentions Fluke. Why? Oh, why? Are there not more books? It's like, annoyingly, there was, I saw a copy in a charity shop one time of one of the Fluke books. And I and that was, I think, probably about it. One book. Really? There was like, uh, and there's also apparently a, a biography of the uh, artist or writer. And uh, you think, really, is that it? For something that was so popular for so long, it just seems weird. Like the Gambles, all these ones. I mean, Gambles, there's loads of collections for the Gambles. You've got obviously examples there. In fact, you hardly need to put an example for the Gambles because those books are still readily available. You can pick them up online. Garth, so you've got Garth in here as well. Garth, of course, the Garth books are readily available. You can find copies on Amazon, etc., eBay and also a comic mark thing. But he does have a lovely section here about Fluke. And I love Fluke. The Sunday Dispatch. Hmm. So it was in Sunday. And I, perhaps some were in different newspapers, maybe other newspapers as well. Meet Fluke by the Sea. And this is the Daily Mail, 1959. I didn't read it then. So uh, this one's 1984. Ah, okay, after the mail had dispensed with him. I assume, is Fluke still going? Now this is the thing, sort of thing with this book. I'm, let's just have a quick look. Let's just go back. Fluke. Fluke. And um, got uh, obviously some example. You've got one big example. I love Fluke. It was just such a brilliant one. Fluke lived here. 1949 to 1984. Trog, Troog, and Keith Waterhouse. And what does it say? Oh, so it stopped 1985. Yeah, okay. I didn't know that. But there's so many examples. But there should be collections of these. There's loads of them. Some are, are not brilliant. And you can see that when you're going through this book. You've got, now Jane, of course, there's a lovely collection of Jane ones, a lovely thick volume of that. I've got a copy of that. But there's so few, so few. And there's little Joe, little Noddy. Now, obviously, everyone knows Noddy. And you've got London Life. Some of these I've never heard of. And that's the great thing. That's, like I say, I hope there's going to be some future editions of this. Maybe a volume two, because obviously, you, many ways, would you want to bring out another, an updated volume of this? Because people like me, obviously got a copy, then you get the updated and you think, ooh, that's a bit, you've got to pay another 
X number of pounds for the update. So maybe a volume two would be nicer than bringing out an A to Z. So that's, that's just a thing. Obviously the uh, Paul Hudson Book Palace will obviously decide if they bring out a volume two, if this is a success and there's more information comes forward, hopefully there will be additional volumes, more than an update of it. <laughs> just putting my thing on that one. However, you got Scarth. Now I remember Scarth, that was, they got examples, again, examples here, some lovely, but still very tricky to get copies of. And of course you can look online and you can go on eBay and you can buy copies of The Sun and it was in The Sun as far as, yeah, 1969 to 1972. So you can buy copies of that, but you, it's very hard to build up a collection if you're just buying, and he mentions the fact he's been buying lots of newspapers and magazines, you can get them, but they're quite expensive. Old copies I've seen, I've looked at some newspapers, some 20, 30 pounds for a newspaper. And you think that is too much for a newspaper, really. I mean, it's just something that was like five pence and you just think, mm, and you only want it for like one comic strip. It's extreme. Uh, and that's the trouble with a lot of this sort of thing. So, uh, and of course, lots of examples, William, William's in here, the workers, ye gods. Like I said, many of them I have never seen. Oh, a few pages here, a bit of glue, sort of sticky. Some that's slightly always an issue. But I think the binding looks very nice. Actually, I've just got to show you the binding there. I'll just point that out. It's always good to show the binding. That actually, before I forget, another slight criticism. Only slight. I wish it had been on slightly different paper. I don't think it works on a glossy paper. This glossy paper, maybe it would, doesn't look as good on another type of paper. I don't know. But it's when I got it, I thought, hmm, maybe it could have been sort of not so shiny paper. But, you know, it's fine, but it's just a, just a minor issue that I think that uh, I'm more keen on sort of uh, the more matte sort of paper, less glossy paper. But that's a minor issue. And of course, it's, I love this bit. You've got the, all the various papers today. And of course, he also, as he mentions, includes things like regional papers. Very hard, because there's so many regional papers. Many have disappeared. Though there are websites, of course, archives and things that you can go and buy access to, where you probably can find lots and lots of different ones. And uh, they're, they're fascinating. I was quite tempted. I occasionally go on them when the free access. But I've never, ever paid to get full access, because I think you have to have a reason. If you don't have a reason, particularly if you're not researching something, it does seem a bit excessive to spend lots of money just to scour through the Aberdeenshire sort of newspapers or something. Why would I want to do that? Or, you know, Hereford News or something. But I guess maybe those newspapers are Hereford News, and I'm just making that one up. Maybe it's a Standard or Express. But you've got all those papers. Maybe they've also got newspaper strips, though it might just have one cartoon. That's the trouble. Do you go for... And he's got a few here where he's just got like one thing. You want newspaper strips. Oh, my favourite. Tiffany Jones. Now you, I mean, weirdly, Tiffany Jones, again, another series of, and I love that one, just beautiful, evocative of the 60s. Of course, it was done in the 60s. This was 1964 to 71 in the Daily Sketch. And I just, brilliant. But there's like a few magazines you can find that have got the Tiffany Jones. Also, you've got uh, one book from Italy. That's it, I've got one new strip of all these sort of Tiffany Jones, and not much, not many of them, but a few, but all in Italian, <laughs> which is, of course, it's not too bad. You can work it out what they're saying, sort of generally. But it's, you think all these strips were immensely popular, and yet now, for some weird reason, have vanished, and Timothy Tarr, I'm certain Timothy Tarr, 1930s, was immensely loved. This was London Star and Regionals. Was immensely loved. Let's uh, show you an example there. Tip, Timothy Tarr. Now, I mean, that's pretty of the star, it says there. And Teddy Bear Features. You know, why wasn't there no collections of these things? They're just beautifully drawn, absolutely lovely, and they've been forgotten about. But I suppose it's the same with the newspapers, comic books, loads of things, all completely gone. And it's such a pity. But that's it. And yet you've got records. I always, I always compare this comic books with records. I shouldn't. But you go with comics and records. Records have got millions. People build up reference guides. I've got books of like Top of the Pops where everyone lists every entry for Top of the Pops. 
breakdowns of every single album, every single bit of examples, books full of pictures of record covers and record sleeves and the discs and everything. And you think, why records so immensely? And yet, newspaper comic strips, people read all the way through the 60s and 50s, etc. And loved, really loved them. And now, gone. Completely forgotten about, literally other than books like this, which is, I really love that. It's just brilliant to bring back so many great memories. And also, just so, to, for the... The artists that created them as well have been sort of totally forgotten. I mean, there's artists in here, I'm certain that, you know, you think, I mean, I'm certain people will turn around and say, if I mention any names, they'll say, oh no, that person's immensely important artist. That possibly is the case. But it is so sad that most, many of these have been sort of like gone, especially the 20s, 30s. And they were good. I love this one. You've got, and this is good. They've actually got, oh, Captain Pugwash. Uh, that one, I have never seen that one. Flute by Trog. Trog. I don't know if you said Trog, Trog. Anyway, but that one, and all Fred Bassett, I've got quite a few of those, Fred Bassett's, and Jane, I love that one. Farewell to Jane. The Larks, the Hayseeds, Garth. I've got quite a few Garth ones, but I haven't got the, um, that, that style. Oh, I love Posey Simmons. Posey Simmons, I've got quite a few of her books. Ah, I wondered if he was gonna include that. London is Stranger Than Fiction. Love that book. Absolute class. Peter Jackson's. That is a book you definitely have to get. Brilliant. You love London. I love London. And I love reading all that. That is definitely a book to get. And then it's got Index of the Creators, which is nice. But it would be nice, actually. There is no a breakdown by genre would have been nice at the back as well. But that's just me. I would have, it would have been nice to see all the ones that were like space related, all the ones that were crime. If you put them all down, all the strips, based on that, instead of spending like obviously two pages each all the way through with uh, the A, B and C, etc. Could have used a few more breakdowns so you could look through it and think, oh, there's like 15 detective ones and you could look them up. So that would have been really quite nice. Breakdown that way. However, also you've got further reading and I love further readings as well as indexes, of course. Indexes are great. And you've got here, some of them I haven't got. I've never heard of this one, Osbert. Portrait of Osbert Lancaster. But also uh, this one, the best of British comic. I've got, uh, I haven't got that one, the stat for me. I've got the history of British newspaper comic strip. I couldn't find it. Couldn't find it in my in my books, but uh, it's, I've got it somewhere. The World Encyclopedia of Cartoons. At times I keep thinking I must buy that. I haven't got that. Penguin Book of Comics. I love that one. That is worth getting. George Perry and Alan Al Fulridge. Always brilliant. I just love that period artwork as well. Also, you've got here Masters of British Comic Art, brilliant book, David Roach. That is a huge, huge from, I think it was Rebellion, 2000 AD. Really worth checking out, just perfect. And this one, Jane, a pin-up at war, really worth getting as well. Also, you've got magazines, Ali Sloper, Sloper, I'm never certain how you say it. And that's another one, brilliant book, magazine. You should be able to find copies on eBay. I've bought one, I've only got one copy but uh, worth getting, and crikey, and illustrators. And also he's got a nice list of online as well. And acknowledgements at the back, and also other books from uh, the uh, Book Palace. And that's really nice. Like There's a whole long list of all the various illustrator specials. And they produce quite a few ones about British artists, Don Lawrence, but they've never done a newspaper strip one, I don't think. And I would love to see a newspaper strip one from the Book Palace. And it would be an ideal format. One of those big, thick, chunky things. Lots of examples of even more. So they could sort of, as a jump to this. That would be superb. They've got Frank Bellamy, etc. Uh, Fleetway Picture Library Index. They're just superb. The War Library, Thrill Library. And also other ones as well. They're very good. Larrigan, I've got that one. And a few of the, Fort I can never say his name. Fort uh, Matania. <laughs> Not even going to say his name. Get it wrong. And then Don Lawrence and Robert E. Howard. I think they're all reasonably familiar. This is just an absolutely superb book. Really, really recommend this book. I think this is just a lovely, nice, thick, chunky book. Really hope there's going to be a, I say, a volume two with additional ones that are found. Because there must be many others. I cannot believe that this is every single newspaper strip that was a British newspaper strip. But this is a really 
brilliant reference book and has to be, I think, for any comic book, newspaper strip fan, this is a must. In America, as well as in the UK, because Americans, of course, there's loads of books on newspaper strips. Well, there's a fair number anyway. But it would, I think anyone that's a comic book fan, really, this is a must have. I think it's lovely. Brilliant, brilliant book from Paul Hudson. Totally recommended.